Bokir Bokir Hey guys, it's a beautiful day once again and you're here back at Dexter's World Channel. Maybe you will ask Dexter, where are you? Well, I'm here at the crab pen of my chief. He is my office mate and he's operating a fish pan. We are privileged enough that he allowed us to have a film on how he do these things. Well, he's been in this business and we would like to get some practical tips on how to go about these things. Well, in here you will see that this is a tank that is filled with milkfish and at the same time, they can also integrate the crabs. Can we mix the crabs together yeah. with the milkfish? And they will grow together and of course, after how many months, they will harvest this one. And we will have some interview with uh, Mr. Ray Eteralde. Is this your first time, Chief, to operate this kind of, or you have already the background on how to do these things? In this uh, area, this is my first time to operate. This is my first time to harvest, to mold for the milkfish, and I have already harvested my crabs over there. How did you learn to, you know, operate this uh, business? I mean, have you started this when you were still young, or? Well, when we were still young, we have already experience in fish pan business because my father used to operate. But that location is in Tugbungan. If you don't have the knowledge about how to to do these things of course many of those who have tried fail so maybe the important thing to know is what kind of food we are giving to the crabs and even to the milkfish i usually give uh, the crabs uh, fresh, fresh fish oh uh, yes i uh, have to clean the fish uh, slice it and throw throw, throw in the pan throw in the pan so, however the milkfish they eat algae and, and sometimes i fed them with bread and how many months are you going to harvest the crabs and the milkfish? Six months. So you will throw the fry of the milkfish mm -hmm. and then after six months you're going to harvest this? Yes. One. So guys, our friend Ray will explain to us how they're going to catch these crabs from the pen. Of course, you will see here. This is the trap, and how do we catch the crab out of this trap? Uh, first, we have to place the bait over here. So you're using uh, what? Fish. Your fish. fish. Yeah, most preferably tilapia. That's, That's our right. native fish also yes, here. Yes, yeah. And then they will get inside. You just throw that over the pan, they will enter here with the bait. Then they will just stay there inside. So the crabs can no longer go out? Yes, because usually their character, they will just pass over the edge of this trap. They will never go here. If they will have the brain, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like humans, <laughs> they can really go out of from course, the trap. Of course, yeah. But they are not humans, so the tendency is they will really uh, concentrate on finding way out at the edges of this trap. We will use this during nighttime or even maybe? daytime. Even daytime. So even daytime. But preferably nighttime because they usually eat uh, during nighttime. Yes. Uh, okay. So what's the purpose also of this one? Uh, so that we will know where our uh, trap is located. located. So this is a floater. A uh, floater, yeah. Yes. Uh, so you look at the ingenuity. You <laughs> use this as floater because this will not sink and you can locate. That will indicate us where our trap is. Yeah, so it's a locator. And I see in this area, I see some fingerlings. Yeah. yeah. These are fingerlings of the milkfish, I think. Fingerlings of the milkfish. So okay. how many days these fingerlings will stay in this very small tank? Usually my practice is when they sell to me the fry, I will just place there. Then after I harvest my 
uh, milkfish, I will catch the fingerlings already, leaving the smaller one, the fry. So these are prepared for this time? Yes. Because tomorrow they're going to harvest the milkfish. And in your estimation, how many milkfish did you throw in this pen? This pen can contain how many? Only 1,500. Oh. I can see. So if you will place more than 1,500, that's overcrowd. That will May, overcrowd. Maybe it will become uh, okay. overcrowd. What exactly is the area of this pen? This is just over 6,000 square meters. 6,000 square meters. So it's less than a hectare. So after six months, you will harvest your milkfish and the average size of this milkfish will maybe three to one kilo? Yeah, sometimes two to one kilo. This one here is a king crab. It weighs about more than a kilo. You try to take a look at this. This one. You look at this, guys. Wow. You will see this king crab. And it weighs more than a kilo. And if you will sell this one, it priced around 1,800 pesos. That's roughly around $30. And if you will eat this at the big restaurants, of course, you will spend much. As he said, this is one of the biggest crabs that they have harvested, but some other crabs are still bigger than this one. The crab is talking. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> be careful with your finger. <laughs> and this size of the crab can already cut our finger, so we cannot put our finger inside because this is very dangerous. They are waiting actually for the individuals who are expert in tying this crabs because if we are not an expert they might cut our finger and injure us severely there are 80 big crabs that are placed in their individual containers this is not the final harvest yet because tomorrow they are going to drain all the water and of course they can get all the crabs and this is the initial harvest because tomorrow they will concentrate on harvesting the milkfish if you will see or look around, there are also some crabs over there and also at the back of this house, there are plenty of crabs. You will also note that they are using the PVC, 2 inches in diameter. So they're using this as their frame so that they can stack these uh, crabs. And you will see that this area is also being utilized for their fighting cocks. And maybe we will also have a short interview. What's the breed of these cocks and how they're going to breed this one? It's going to be a fine day today. I can see. There are two methods on how to catch the crab. And uh, Chief Ray can explain to us. Of course, this is the first method. Yes, we call this in our local dialect as bintul. Bintul. Bintul, yes. So we have to place the bait over here. And this is what we call the antenna. So that we can detect whether or not the crab has already, has eaten, already the bait. eaten the bait. Yeah. When this moves, when this moves, you have uh, to get the hook, then immediately lift this. Oh. Then the crab will stay here. So this is made of bamboo. And you will see how they fabricate this one. Of course, this is being attached by means of this rope. So guys, they have placed a trap over there and we're gonna check this out if we were able to catch one. Wow. Oops. We have one. It's good cat. Can I help you? I will help you. this <laughs> it's a big crab inside in this trap is this a king crab or or a blue crab maybe this is not a king crab the red one not okay. a king crab not, not a, king a king crab, crab. So you see that the crabs inside is still holding the bait so he wasn't able to eat the bait yet maybe this crab has just entered this net
servant is showing to us how to properly tie this crab and that's what I have said it needs an expert to do these things because if you are not an expert on this uh, chances are the crabs will be able to harm us because it's very strong porque necesita que con el trinca para que junto no man mordijan so the reason why they gonna tie this is to prevent these crabs from fighting each other and they will be placed in one single big container this is now ready for delivery i have to stack this maybe this container will accommodate maybe 20 or 25 25 pieces pieces of this one They are going to tie more than 100 crabs today and they're gonna deliver this to the bodega. This bodega is a known buyer of uh, crabs. Whoa, that's a big club. And uh, I would like to honor this man. Uh, he is uh, Ray Toralde and my close friend and my superior in the office. And aside from his work as a government worker, government employee, as a human rights protect protector, he is actually finding some ways on how to augment his income. It's, uh, he's a rich man. <laughs> and, uh, you not was, yet, not yet. <laughs> uh, he has been very successful. All his uh, kids are have finished studies. In fact, he has a doctor. Yeah. A, a son My is a doctor. My eldest son is a doctor. Uh, a yeah. So that's a you know a privilege for us to meet some people and of course they're willing to share also their life's life's experiences for us to be encouraged and for us also to learn some lessons out of what they are doing uh, you know guys uh, Dexter is my co-employee uh, he's also an investigator and I am the chief investigator in the Commission on Human Rights Regional Office 9 you know Dexter is very fun of uh, making some uh, film uh, regarding uh, something that is uh, so very interesting, interesting. Yeah. he used to do that so now he is here so i thank him for that yeah. because he will uh, maybe he will upload that or i, yes, I don't know I, definitely uh, i will upload this on youtube yeah. and this is gonna serve as our file the videos that we are going to upload will be there for the rest of our life nah. and uh, your of course your friends can also see this one so thank you for watching guys I hope you will continue to like and share our videos and please don't forget to subscribe if you are new to our channel only here at Dexter's World